Nostalgia as a theme never fails to strike a chord. Whether as tea time conversation amongst friends or as a marketing tool to engage consumers. This was the topic of discussion at the latest edition of the IAA Conversations. Let's go right into snapshots from the dialogue Pradyuman Maheshwari had with future groups Santosh Desai and Neeraj Kakkar of Paperboat. We have here with us Mr. Santosh Desai who is a, a, a brand expert and a thinker if I might say and Neeraj Kakkar who is uh, possibly running one of the coolest business in town. Santosh, marketing of nostalgia almost sounds like cashing in on nostalgia. Now, is that a good thing or a bad thing? No, I think it's a perfect, you know, I mean, marketing connects with, you know, uh, human motivations of various kinds and, and it, it addresses, I mean, it talks to people about what they need. Nostalgia is a very important part of our lives. You know, we, and it has nothing to do with marketing. I mean, we are nostalgic about so many things. We are nostalgic about childhood, about the school that we might have studied in or the college days uh, that, you know, you would have spent. So the idea of nostalgia is intrinsic to life and marketing connects with anything that is intrinsic to life. So I think marketing of nostalgia is not in any way uh, exploitative or, or you know, using something which is somehow sacred for, for the purposes of selling. I think that's what marketing does. I mean, so and, and I think it's perfectly legitimate for it to connect with nostalgia. You know, you've, uh, you, you've been using nostalgia in a big way. Of how did you think of using uh, uh, the connect with a person's past to to promote your products. See, we we sell paperboard drinks, right? So these all these drinks have recipes which go back thousands of years. These recipes are um, uh, handed over from one generation to another. These recipes have been disappearing because they are not available in packaged hygienic form. So that's what that's the thing which we're trying to do: sell those, preserve those cultural, culturally very important traditional recipes uh, in 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 the newer age form. So when we decided on the brand, we took, talked about two words, like we talked about alive, which is modern, young, contemporary, and we talked about authentic, which is it should be as it, it is as it should be. And when you have to con you know, communicate authentic, we chose the memories route, because memories, for everybody, memories is the most pure, innocent, authentic form, right? So, so in, us, in our case, we are trying to communicate our authenticity by showing those pure innocent memories, that's the idea here. Of course, Paperboat is not the first uh, uh, company which has used nostalgia to its benefit. So it has obviously worked for everybody. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I'm sure that you know because of the fact that whenever it's real, you know, whenever I, I think, as Neeraj said, you know, there is a certain authenticity in this particular case. The fact that you've gone back to recipes, uh, you know, that are that that have existed uh, for the longest time possible. I think it it makes it that much easier for a brand for for you know for nostalgia to work when when it goes back and reminds me of, you of something that happened in the case of maggie for instance you know what maggie what it presents is is actually a memory that most people would share and you nod and you say yes i was there and i feel the same way too and so i think that kind of nostalgia has a way because it is grounded in in reality it has a way of connecting and that's what it works it's not necessary that nostalgia is a kind of formula that would work in each and every case. I mean, it's not, it's, it, it has to have certain enabling conditions uh, in which it can work. But authenticity is certainly one important element uh, for, for nostalgia to work. But in most of these cases, the, the uh, nostalgia is about one's childhood. And we were thinking about these drinks. So I, I had a memory of a drink called Kanji, which was made to me, uh, made for me when I was young. That drink has disappeared from my life. Now the drink is only a memory for me. And when we were thinking about how to communicate that aspect of the drink to the uh, consumers, we thought of the name paperboard. You know, paperboard is the most innocent memory any human being could have. And why childhood? Because at that time you don't understand relationships, you don't understand law, you don't understand gravity, you don't you don't understand any of this. You, there is so much of innocence in you, and you make that paper board, and 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 it's 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 a, it's a very pleasurable experience. And that's the memory, that's the experience which we are trying to communicate with this brand and these products. But is there a possibility that because you are looking at nostalgia and because you are looking at people reminisce their childhood, you are actually appealing to a slightly older set of people and uh, the the you know in, in your case uh, for instance for soft drinks where there's a large market for for children so you there, there would be a disconnect with them my son is 11 year old and uh, he never in his life 
in last 11 years he had Am Panna before we launched Am Panna. While I was growing up, I had Am Panna every single day of like summers at least. Like every single day I was given it before I went out to play in the afternoon sun. So in some sense we are creating these memories for him. We are creating this drink for him which he will grow up with. Our objective is that we'll, we'll present to them in a very young contemporary fashion 30 years down the line. 30 years down the line those kids like they will think, you know, if somebody has to make Ampana or they should look back on the paperwork pack and then copy the recipe and make it. Like that's the objective. What's your view, Sadhush? No, you know, I, I just like to say that, you know, this thing that nostalgia must necessarily be rooted in childhood is not true. Nostalgia is, is actually a return to an idealized, often imagined state of innocence. It is, I mean, when you say, for instance, when say in India you talk about Ram Raj. It's a nostalgic idea, the idea which, which never in a real sense existed. It is a mythical nostalgic ideal. For instance, you take in a, the context of a brand, uh, Royal Enfield, uh, you know, is a brand which has a certain nostalgic character. It is, but it is not nostalgic necessarily about the bullet, you know, 20 years ago, which was, you know, could have been a milkman's, uh, you know, a bike. It is nostalgia for a certain ideal of masculinity, a certain experience of a physical contact with the machine and in those days in a world that has gone digital in a world where you are more and more removed from physical experiences we where you are nostalgic for for an earlier imagined era so i don't think it is necessarily true that because nostalgia is almost always an idealized state of longing but when you did conceive of paperboard was this entire thing orchestrated was there a was there a uh, had you decided that you would actually use the nostalgia route to appeal to people? See, in our sense, so we see ourselves as some sense protector of these recipes. Like our responsibility is that if we don't if we don't exist, then any of these recipes might not exist 20, 30 years down the line. And we'll do whatever it takes for kanji to become, you know, have a longer life. Like you know, so be there 100 years from now. And and so so that's our role. And. Uh, Memories came much later, like we said alive, which is yeah, I have to package it well, I have to put it in a young contemporary fashion and I have to make it authentic and that's that's my job, like that's my mission. Memories is a way to communicate that authenticity, it is a derivation of what we are trying to do, the larger mission of the company. So does nostalgia as, as, a, as a brand plank work towards mitigating the uncertain anticipations about the future? Well, I think the, one of the reasons why nostalgia exists is because of the anxiety about, you know, because of the dislocation that the present creates and the anxiety about the future. And nostalgia is a kind of a retreat away from, from the reality of, of the complexity of the world that you face. And, and there, is a, there is an urge to return to a more innocent time. And I think particularly at this time, when, you know, you have not... The change that we are seeing when we talk about the digital world, is a change of a very fundamental kind. I mean, it's a, you've got a virtual world that has been created and, and you know, we refer to reality as offline. I mean, which is just an incredible inversion, you know. For millions of years, we've had this reality and now suddenly it is the opposite of, of, of the virtual world. So I think it creates anxieties and then nostalgia becomes, I think you, you hang on to nostalgia very strongly when you're faced with, with these kind of uh, uncertainties. Is there a worry you have that this nostalgia plank that you've taken will at some point uh, not work with customers? So my plank is authenticity and memory is a way to show that authenticity. The day my recipes are not getting the 95 score, uh, we will be thrown out. Like as Santosh said earlier, it's an extremely high benchmark to take. Like you're competing with the memory of a drink. So the core if you were to look at a product when, when Neeraj says authenticity, it's actually about saying you are underserved today. You are underserved because you like a certain taste which is not available to you and it is being made available to you. Nostalgia is an added layer that 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 is, you know, which is, you know, as he says, he uses the word memory instead of nostalgia in a sense, because it is that it is going back in time and saying, I used to have this, I don't have it any longer. Especially in a food product, is there a fear of a disconnect if it doesn't seem to work with what you have tasted in the past. No, absolutely, and which is the reason why, in, because it is such a, as a benchmark, it's a frightening benchmark to measure yourself against. I mean, and therefore there is a sort of an inbuilt sort of a protection, if you like, against uh, the misuse of nostalgia, because if you are trying to match that taste, unless you really come close to it, unless you really invest, 
in in uh, trying to get as authentic as possible unless that is a really important goal for you you are going to fail and and the market will punish you because of the fact that you are being measured against something that you cannot you know live up to so to that extent to it this is an extraordinarily brave uh, strategy and and it's an extraordinarily difficult one you are fighting the memory of a taste which is again an idealized memory there have been attempts made in the past to bring up nostalgia look at products that one was familiar with as a kid but it never seemed to have worked as well as uh, paper boat has whenever you try and industrialize what is a traditional recipe it's a very challenging extremely difficult thing to do and i think here the idea of i mean the fact that you are committing to not just the fact that you have a seasonal calendar but that it varies by region including markets that are not conventionally considered to be large markets and orissa for instance is not considered to be uh, uh, you know a very significant market in other people's uh, sort of calculations within that you are delivering different recipes of the same product to different regions so it's a hyper local a hyper cultural kind of a strategy that you are using unless you do something like that and you have the ability to deliver to that when you just try and you know cobble together something that kind of approaches a traditional taste Uh, but in a more packaged industrialized form you fail as as so many other people have because that just doesn't match up in terms of taste say 5 years from now when all his products are known to people do you think he should continue to use uh, the memories bit i think th- those are questions that i'm sure he will answer you know uh, you know as and when for it will we'll save 5 years later i'll save some money <laughs> so you can tell me now <laughs> So I, I, but I don't think I don't think the core idea is is related to memories. I mean, I don't think the core brand thought is necessarily related to the idea of of memories, and uh, therefore I don't think they necessarily need to uh, feel that that is the only way to 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 connect with uh, with their markets. So five years out, you know, I think they will have options. Having said that, I think nostalgia as a plank is not going away anywhere. Great. On that note, thank you very much. for being part of IA conversations thank you, thank you very much